Black Mirror's first interactive episode, Bandersnatch, seriously blew up, in part because of its smart and intriguing marketing, but also mostly because of its undeniable artistic value. There's never been something quite like it before, and YouTube content creators have gone to great lengths to completely pick it apart. There's been much talk about its endings, their variations, or even the meaning of it all. But at the end of the day, it's left to us to interpret its content, and while I could tell you about the secret Ice Path, Lions, or Colin, I've chosen a different topic for this video. Bandersnatch representation of a cycle, a spiral, a never-ending maze that keeps leading all of us back to its start only to put us through torture again. And this is Bandersnatch and the horror of routine. Oh, it goes without saying, but um, heavy spoilers incoming. Viewer's discretion is advised. There's never been an episode of Black Mirror I've reacted to quite like I've reacted to this one. There's been many times that I've been disturbed, scared, or even mad after watching an episode. But I've never felt quite as upset as I felt after watching Bandersnatch. Whenever I was asked of my opinion about this episode, I answered something along the lines of I hated it, but you have to watch it. My friends didn't quite understand what I meant until they've played it themselves. One of them even remarking how much Stefan and his journey through endlessly repeating madness reminded them of me. I think you can imagine how this drove me even deeper into the winding labyrinth of realities that Bandersnatch presents to us. Even now, as I'm writing the script, I'm struggling to put my feelings about this experience into words, and that's frustratingly but also ironically why I'm so enamored with it. To understand where I'm coming from, let's first take a look at Stefan, the main character. Stefan's goal is simple, he wants to develop a good video game. Bandersnatch the movie presents him with a variety of ways to reach his goal but almost all of them end with the game being of subpar quality and even the murder of his father. Two endings stand out in this regard. The one in which Stefan dies with his mother and never gets the idea to develop the game, and the one where Stefan accepts the offer presented to him at Tuckersoft, which results in the game receiving 0 out of 5 stars rating. In a way, only these endings lift the curse of developing Bandersnatch from Stefan. But as we can see in the latter one, he still feels compelled to try again, to re-enter the maze as he ostensibly thinks there is an optimal way of traversing the choices laid in front of him. In a way, this also reflects the viewer's approach, as we are yet to see just how bad things can get when we force Stefan to develop the game alone. And yet, throughout viewing Stefan's mental health deteriorate, and the available choices getting increasingly insane, I couldn't but wonder if Stefan was destined to fail. Bandersnatch was destined n to not come out, or to receive that dreaded 0 out of 5. This is exactly the point where I felt reminded of my own experience. You see, throughout 2017 and 18, I've been trying to get my driver's license. Easy enough, you might think. Except you have to consider that I suck. Horribly. I had taken and failed the exam repeatedly, every time pondering on what I could have done differently, obsessing over the unchangeable past. And as the months passed, I kept repeating the same actions, the same mistakes, the same improvements, just to fail yet again and restart the cycle. Throughout this time, I felt a loss of control over my life. I was going through the phases, and even though I knew I was bound to fail again and again, I just faked confidence at each new exam. I was trapped in a maze of choices and actions that never felt quite like my own. I wanted not to disappoint, and this locked me into repeating the cycle infinitely, as I was sure that, that I could find the perfect combination of choices they would lead me to finally get my driver's license. Sound familiar? This is why Stefan's routine during the development of Bandersnatch has been haunting me ever since I've first seen it. Stefan is stubborn in wanting to create Bandersnatch. Going down a path he isn't meant to be on, 
he has trapped himself in an endlessly spinning wheel of failure. He feels a lack of control over his own actions, just like I did, because they're indeed not his own. He is trapped in a routine, forcing himself to try over and over again, even though he deep down knows the game will never be successful. Our options for choices get more extreme as he desperately wishes to break out of this nightmarish reality, even going as far as to kill his own father, just to find an exit to this maze, just to stop being a failure. And that's the horror of a routine that doesn't fit us. We dread every decision in our life in fear of failure, even though we know it's inevitable. We've simply chosen the wrong path just once. We lose control and then go looking for an exit when it's too late. Now, as I'm writing this, I'm about to take my final driver's license exam. I've repeated all of the same steps to a fault, but ever since I've seen Bandersnatch, something changed. Although I'm still convinced I'll fail, I won't be able to fake any confidence this time. The smile I'll wear during the exam will stem from a different source. The reassuring thought that I'll be rid of the horror of routine, while others, like Stefan, are trying again.